today you're doing tequila. I'm assuming you're a, a tequila fan, as I am. <laughs> what was the beginning of your journey? Let's see. Well, the beginning of the journey, I would say, is when I was making the surf movies, I was traveling the world probably nine months out of the year. And then I was about to have a baby with my ex, and we were like, okay, where do we want to live? Because once you have a, a kid, you can't really travel as much. It's not fair to them to have this gypsy lifestyle. And so I came up with a plan that was about moving to a different country every six years during different stages of their childhood. And so I moved to Bali, Indonesia for the first six years. And then I went to Australia for the next six years. And there, it's all in stages like before school. And then once you start first grade, the sixth grade, you're going to be with the same group of friends. And then seventh grade through high school, you were probably with the same group of friends. And so it's like, those are transition times to move. And so that idea just was not good for work. It was just something that I thought would be a life well spent. And so once I started doing that, the surf films at that same time were disappearing. It was moving away from DVDs to bit torrents and YouTubes and people weren't buying physical things. They were getting them online. And so that market was disappearing and I had to reinvent myself and transition into a new career. And I transitioned when I moved to Australia, transitioned to making commercials and making, you know, being a commercial director. And the first job I got was with Corona beer and they hired me to do a commercial. And I went down to Mexico and shot for two weeks and it felt very similar to making surf films and that same energy. Hmm. And then from there, that was so successful that they hired me again for the next commercial. And then they hired me again. And then they made me a creative director for the brand down in Australia. And that I built an artist residency because I wanted to build out their music division. And so I had these artists come on this beach house and just experience a place to create and, and have this good energy around that. Then I just started doing more of that. And by doing that journey, it felt very similar to what I stood for. And as you grow as a commercial director, you start getting bigger campaigns and campaigns for other brands. And I started questioning what those brands stood for and what I was selling and why I was selling it and had this sort of moral dilemma with it where, you know, it's paying the bills, but it's like, why am I doing it? And so for me, I started being really selective on those commercials and, and pulling back on that. And then I was doing some creative direction for other brands. And I just go like, I'm doing all this stuff for other people. Why don't I create a brand that I stand for it and something that I could really put all my ethos into. And mm -hmm. then that's where the, the idea of this was. I was living at New York at the time and I discovered sipping tequila with friends there. And I just thought about like, what will make me more present and slow down and be like connected. What sort of thing do I do besides surfing that does that? And I was thinking about when I sort of are sipping tequila with friends at, in the afternoon, it's like, that's when I'm connecting with them and I'm talking. It's sort of a, a reason to connect with them. And so that's where it started. And then I had to go do the, the hard work to figure out the logistics after that. That's awesome. I love what you said too. I mean, there was a time when I was, I had a software company and I was at a bar one day and I was like, I'm selling software. And it was this moment of like, what am I doing? Like I'm selling software. That was it. I think two months later, I was like onto, the, onto doing my own thing because it was just, I don't know. It's, and it was fine. Like people do that, you know, they make a living. It was totally okay. But to me, it just felt like I, there were greater problems or greater opportunities in the world than, than what I was working on. And I was like, it was a tough moment to be honest, because it was, just, I, I was actually with a client, oddly enough at the bar. And I, I was like, Tiffany, I'm selling software and I, I can't, like, I don't know. I don't know why I'm doing this. It's good to have those moments. I think. I, I think so. I think it's good to check in with yourself and, and really see if you're doing what you're passionate about and what you care about, because I think it's easy to lose that. And then we, we don't know why we're doing it. And for me, like making sure that you're in love with what you do, is what's needed in the world and that inspires other people. Agreed. So what was your first step? So you decide to go to tequila and then are you then checking out some tequila farms, some agave farms? How do you? Like, I felt like my background in filmmaking and marketing would be like that part I have a handle on and mm -hmm. I, I done it for some alcohol brands in the past. So I, I could figure that out. So I wanted to really make sure that when they tried it, that it held up to this height. And so I, I visited 30 distilleries, spent three weeks down there, really sort of learning about it, having a fast track education on it. And then I started working with some flavor notes and it narrowed down to four distilleries and four flavors, the tones that I wanted from 
each of those. And I brought it back to my friends back in America and I did a blind taste test because I didn't trust my taste alone on it. Smart. Really smart. Only one was organic and the rest weren't, but they all had amazing stories and the people were super cool. And one was like the high altitudes had a story or the facilities were beyond clean. You could eat off the floor or the, you know, they're all like had a cool vibe that I felt like I could talk to, but Mm -hmm. For me, it was like the taste was number one. The taste had to be the thing that really drove it because it's a busy space. It's a difficult space to break into. So the idea is like you try it and then you don't ever switch. It's a long haul for marathon sort of thinking is like one day the marketing will touch you and you'll be like, oh, screw it. I got to try this. And then once you try it, you're like, I'm hooked. This is mine now. This is what I'm going to go with. So to get there, I didn't want to just be my taste. So I, I got 40 people and did blind taste. And I put in some name brands with that. And so they tried it all. And then this one won at 95% of the time, at least. Then I just really went, okay, this is the right taste. And and now let's start pushing 